In this video, I'll be going over step-by-step -step how to make this exact pendant from scratch using just basic tools. So let's get started. And when I said by scratch, I actually meant I'm gonna be rolling and casting my own sheet metal and wire, but you can also just buy yours in the same sizes I'm gonna be using. And if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm putting soot onto these so our metal doesn't stick to the actual molds. So for this particular piece, I'm just going to be using some scrap silver. It's better to cut it up into smaller pieces so it melts down easier. So that's why it's like this. And don't worry about sizings or anything like that of the metal I'm using. I'll make sure to put everything in the description below. But for the most part, all I'm going to need is some 0.8 millimeter sheet metal. It is really handy though to have the things to make your own sheet and wire, so you don't have to just buy it every time. And you can reuse pieces after you've already cut them out, instead of sending them in to be recycled. So now that I have this to the size that I need it to be, I need to flatten it out or at least make it as flat as possible. I'm just going to be hitting it with a rawhide mallet to try to get it as flat as I can. So for the honeycomb design, I made this on the computer, printed it out, and put it on some label paper to just stick it to our piece. So we're going to be doing a lot of piercing cuts on this, so I need to mark them out so we can drill the holes using a center punch. I'm going to be using a 0.8 millimeter drill bit, but you can really use anything that's not going to mess up your design work. When drilling through metal, make sure you use some sort of cut lube or a lubricant of some sort so you don't burn up your drill bit. Also, when you're drilling through something, make sure you keep in mind what's behind it. I'm drilling through into my bench pin, but you could accidentally drill into your hand if you're just holding the piece. So when it comes to the actual sawing work, I'm going to be using some 4 aught nano blades, and these seem to last a long time and work really well. So I'm going to warn you right now, this kind of piercing cut is very tedious, and if you are not very good with your saw blade skills, you're going to go through and probably break a lot of blades no matter what you use. So just relax and practice if you can on cheaper metals before moving on to something like silver or gold for this. But once you get this cut out, it should be around 35 millimeters. So we're going to need to do a little bit of basic math to figure out how much metal we need to go completely around this. All you need is the measurement of the disc and the thickness of the metal that we're going to be wrapping around into a cylinder. So I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible for people to understand because everyone seems to have problems with the math. So all we have to do is take the diameter of the honeycomb piece that we cut out, which should be around 35 millimeters. Mine happens to be 34.75 millimeters. And we need to subtract the thickness of the metal we're going to be using to make our cylinder, which is 0.77. So that should give us 33.89 millimeters. And then we need to multiply this number by 3.14 or pi. And this will give us 106.6 millimeters. And I'm just gonna round it down to 106. So this will be the total length we need to make a cylinder that will go completely around underneath our honeycomb piece. But before I mark that out, I'm going to mark out 8 millimeters because our piece is going to be 8 millimeters tall. And then mark out our 106 millimeter line. And now that I have both of these lines, I can cut them out. So I'm going to be cutting it out using the jeweler saw. You can use other methods of cutting it, whatever really works for you. But whatever you do, make sure everything is as straight as you can possibly get it and take off any burrs. Also for each end, I'm going to use a miter block to make sure that they're perfectly squared. So when we solder them, the joint is going to be as strong as possible and have no gaps. So I'm going to be annealing my piece because it's already work hardened from hammering it flat and I need it as soft as possible to form into a cylinder. So if you're using a pre-made piece of metal, it might be hard or it might be soft. It depends on what you bought, but you can always anneal it to soften it up. So when it comes to actually rounding this, you're not going to be able to use your standard mandrel like you would on a ring or anything like that because it's just too small. So I'm actually going to be using some pliers that are made for bending bracelets and just kind of making it work. This is just because I don't have any cylinders that are the right size. 
if you're doing this like I am, just make sure you don't get any sharp bends in your metal and you should be fine. But you need to connect both ends of it so we can solder them together. For soldering it together, I'm just going to use some handy flux on the joint and heat it up so I can place my solder. I'm going to be using some hard silver solder and putting some flux on it. It seems to work a lot better like this and it kind of just sticks to your piece because everything's hot. You don't have to do it this way, but this is how I like to do it. Once everything's placed, you can go ahead and heat it up and make sure that it stays on the actual solder joint. Use a solder pick if needed to move everything back. So once everything's all soldered, you're going to want to throw this in a pickling pot and then shape it back into a circle or the best circle that you can with what you got. Once you have everything to your liking, you're going to need to sand it down to make sure that everything is going to be flush. I'm going to be using 120 grit sandpaper. So one helpful tip with this is to wet sand it. It makes it so your sandpaper doesn't get clogged with the silver dust. So once you have everything to your liking, we're going to solder them together by fluxing both the pieces and adding a bunch of pieces of hard silver solder all the way around the inside of the piece. When heating this, make sure that you do not stay in one spot for too long or you will melt things, especially the honeycomb pattern. It is very thin and it's very easy to melt. So try to go along the outside of this first and then work your way on the inside and pretty much never stop moving. So after pickling your piece, inspect it and make sure that there's no gaps. And if there are, make sure to re-solder those areas until there are absolutely no gaps. So now we can put the back plate on. You want to flux both pieces like we did before and heat it so everything dries. And then I'm just going to place hard silver solder pieces all the way around it. And when it comes to heating it, I'm going to be heating it from underneath to get everything nice and warm and then moving on to the top to make sure that all the pieces are the same temperature and our solder flows properly. So after the soldering and the pickling of your piece, we need to cut out the back plate. You can cut it as close as you feel comfortable to the actual cylinder, but try not to actually hit it or you're going to have to take out saw marks. And if you have a little bit sticking out, it's totally fine. We're just going to file everything down anyways. With this all filed down in uniform now, I'm going to add a bevel to the edges because the transition from the sides to the back is kind of sharp. I'm also going to do this to the top of the piece. So when it comes to finishing your piece, it's really gonna be up to you. You can do a high polish, you can do really whatever you want. I'm going to be cleaning it up with some sanding sticks and some rotary bristle brushes to just kind of even everything out. And then I'm going to be throwing it into a tumbler. One other freedom you have with this piece is what you turn it into. So from here you can turn it into a ring or you can turn it into a pendant. I'm going to be turning it into a pendant using a jump ring and kind of just measuring out where I want the jump ring to be cut so I can match everything up. So when it comes to soldering this jump ring on, I'm just going to flux it, use a solder pick to put some medium solder on each point, and then I can heat this and put it directly onto the pendant. Using a third hand makes this a lot easier, seeing that you can hold everything in place and it won't really move around on you. So after cleaning it up in the pickling solution, I'm going to add two more floating jump rings to this so we have something to attach our chain to. So I want to add a black finish to this and on the inside of this piece. So I'm going to be using some liver of sulfur in some hot water. Basically all you have to do is mix some in there and then put your piece in there for about 10 to 30 minutes. You should have a nice black finish over your entire piece now. I'm going to be using some hone and highlight tumbling medium and this will give me that kind of matte look that kind of looks like stone to my piece. It works the same as just about any tumbling medium. Just put it into your tumbler, add some water with a little bit of soap, and I let it sit in here for 30 minutes. And here it is after the 30 minutes being in the tumbler and it looks almost identical to our copper one. I actually really like this tumbling medium and I like the finish that it gives. It's very different from anything else I really see. 
That's about it for these. You can really change them up to however you'd like, and this is just a basic example of how to do something like this. I'll have links in the description to everything I used in this video, so if you need any of the tools or materials, you'll find them in the description below, along with a printable file for the honeycombs that I used in this video. Other than that, if you have any questions, leave a comment. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up, and watch some of my other videos. I'll have some playlists on the screen now, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this every week. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.